Hi everyone, my name is Inuk. I'm a Master Caribou Hair Tufter for 25 years and going. Hashtag Inuk360. But I thought I'd do a little demonstration of Caribou Hair Tufting. Um, the only way I could try and prevent people from um, implement, in, taking the video, I've um, written my hashtag on my hand so you could watch. So I'm going to be using some natural caribou hair, my little bowl of water, a pair of my scissors, and um, for the sake of the video I dotted out a little design of my ptarmigan and this is done on leather. This is the leather needle and the sinew that I use, so enjoy! It's December 11, 2016. I'm not sure if I already said that. Um, I'm born and raised in the Northwest Territories, Canada. As I said, I've been doing this for over going over 25 years now, and I've traveled all over the world, displaying and demonstrating how tufting is done and selling it. You could find my work in many private collections across the world. So you can see here I have a little garbage can and I've uh, dipped my fingers in water and what I'm doing is I'm taking the short pieces and there's a fine down out. You could tuft with Caribou hair, moose hair, reindeer, deer, Rocky Mountain doll sheep I found out. Don't blink. It just went from a bundle to a tuft. And what I'm doing, you can see how tight, well I hope you can see how tight I'm tying the knots. I personally do every bundle, which turns into every tuft, I tie off each one individually so you can very tightly so the hair can't come out. And there's my first tuft. So it is only with time and practice that you learn how close or how far apart, how, how big the bundles are. Um, how big the bundles are and how close you tuft them together. That's only time and practice. As I said, I've, I've been born and raised in the Northwest Territories, Canada. I was born in the Southern Detcho region and um, I still continue to live in the Northwest Territories, Canada. Now you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter under the, the name Inuk360 at INUK360. It's December 11th, 2016. You can see the pressure on my fingers. I don't know what the name of this knot is. Um, so when you're, you're learning to tuft, by the time I'm done, it should be like, a, almost like velvet. You shouldn't be able to tell how many tufts how, I, I did in a section. Um, unless you are meaning for each tuft to be identified. When you're doing a bird or an animal, you should be nice and smooth. 
and they should all blend together even when the hair is different colors and here's one that's kind of like a salmon salmon colored I'm cutting this hair because it's too short for me to use. If it was longer, I would use it again. So I hope you do follow me. YouTube, Inuk360, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. This is one of the oldest art forms there is tufting. It actually came over from Europe to Canada and then across Canada and made its way to the Northwest Territories and is now known as one of the traditional arts and crafts of the Northwest Territories. Years ago they used horse hair I've also seen tufting done with yarn and some of my students, whether it's in Inuvik Northwest Territories or in Siberia, in Russia, um, depending on what you have access to or in New Mexico where I've demonstrated. If you don't have access to moose hair, caribou hair or reindeer, you could use yarn. You know the short yarn that is used for hook rugs? I've seen people do that. So if you want to give it a try yourself, practice. Maybe I'll do one more for you. And then I'm going to show you where a lot of the a lot of time and patience goes into the trimming. Now there's also called sculpting. Now sculpting caribou hair or is different than tufting. Sculpting is when they actually cut the design out of the hide. You can see the hair is still on the hide here because caribou hair is quite fine. And they'll cut out a design of an igloo, dog team, uh, Eskimos or Inuit people and then they'll, with the hair still on it, and they'll trim the hair down shorter as you can see here. And then they'll glue this or attach this somehow to velvet or leather and then frame it. So when you see a tufting that's a, a dog team or an igloo for $49.95 or $155 and it's quite large it is it could very well be a sculpture as you, as I said they they cut out the design and then they they tack it onto the background of velvet or leather and then they frame it but if you did the actual tufting as I'm showing you here now this is what actual hair tufting is not fur we don't call it fur I'm a caribou hair tufter I don't know why people are so shy to say um, tufting with caribou hair or caribou um, moose hair or reindeer hair that's what it's called so in 2016 people should really get used to saying um, this is hair tufting caribou hair tufting there's a difference so pay attention to if you want the authentic tufting caribou hair tufting or moose hair tufting then um, the, the more educated you are the better purchase you'll you'll make and um, sometimes on the back of the frame pictures it won't be so um, easy for um, people to tell the difference between two except for the price tag. Because if I tufted a igloo or a dog team with Inuks on the back of the dog team, it, it would be for a lot more than $149.95 because the amount of hours would be phenomenal. So there's a little other piece of education for tufting. So as you can see now, it looks like a little <coughs> fur ball. 
in the back. I would actually keep going, but for the purpose of this little demonstration, um, I'm going to show you now how important a tufter's scissors are to us. This is where a lot of time and patience go into. I forget, I already forgot how many bundles I tufted. Let me know what you think of my caribou hair tufting demonstration. It's my first time trying this by myself, so I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you for joining me. My name's Inuk, hashtag Inuk360. I'm a master caribou hair tufter designer, multimedia artist from the Northwest Territories, Canada. I hope you try too. Thanks for joining me.